Hello, here I have a EJ257 long block. I am uh, working on the heads here. Got a used pair of heads and uh, a lot of valves were bent. Some of them right here. Uh, some as well fell that were more obviously bent. Um, so a lot of work has to be done uh, to get these going properly. So with this style of engine the valve lifters are solid. There's no hydraulic movement on the inside. It is not like a previous car I'm used to that had hydraulic lifters instead it has these. So I came up with this idea as you can see this one as a preview um, for valve lash adjustment rather than grinding the valves since I already have the heads torqued down, I don't want to have to take the heads off and get a new head gasket. Um, to grind the valves, to reduce the valve lash, you would want the heads off. So I thought, okay, um, well, the end of the valve that you'd grind makes contact here, as you can see with those wear patterns that are kind of mirrored. Um, so you could just grind that down to effectively reduce the valve lash gap. And the valve lash gap is the distance between these lifters here and the cams. And there's factory preset gaps that um, you want to maintain. And uh, suppose, supposedly after 100,000 miles it's going to be off and you need to do this anyway. Um, so the exhaust side needs to have a larger gap than the intake side because the heat from the exhaust um, is going to uh, expand their, uh, the length of the valve therefore decrease the gap and uh, if the gap is too small on either side hot or cold um, then uh, you run the risk of having your valve open when it should not be and uh, you can burn up a valve that way and break the engine fast and you'll also until you break it not have compression or less compression and if you have too much um, well that's just extra slap wear um, from the cam lobe onto the surface of these so I figured I would show the grinding of one and I guess let me first show that uh, the valve lash adjustment is typically done by replacing these cups with other cups and so I got an engine with um, well just a blown up engine um, the uh, check that out so the piston was shattered too there's a piece of it <laughs> Yeah, so I haven't even driven this car yet. Rebuilding the engine, which pretty much is requiring a lot of new parts. Not exactly rebuilding the engine, it's kind of building a new engine. Um, yeah, so these lifters all have their own number on the inside. So that is. 0.498 inches from that reflective surface that's shining at us to the top of this surface. Now you would need a micrometer to measure that yourself, but these are measured already for you. Um, just keep in mind when dealing with used ones, that number is relative because that um, measurement that it's measuring after being used, it's gone through countless cycles, therefore that changes its actual thickness. But you can do what I and many others do, which is this painstaking, annoying process. Um, so here you can see I've marked uh, the front of my heads over here, and then the right head and the left head. Eight valves and lifters per head and uh, 
So let's just look at one for example. Um, this will focus. Focus. Okay. So with a 511 on the, on the top here, um, I ended up with a uh, 0.011 valve lash gap. That's in inches. I'm, I'm doing all inches for this. Um, and then in my second try, I, I used a, uh, a 506, and I ended up with um, 13 thousandths of an inch. Uh, now, so far for uh, this head, um, uh, let's see, what did I end on? I ended on uh, 16 thousandths for each exhaust valve. So you want eight thousandths for the intake valves, and the manual says thirteen thousandths for the exhaust. Um, but after talking with a local experienced Subi shop, they said really it's thirteen to sixteen thousandths. So so far, I've got thirteen thousandths all across on one head and sixteen thousandths on another. Um, so. I'll, I've finally finished after a lot of work. Um, I could leave it alone the way it is, but I want to actually go ahead and grind all lifters on this head that has the 13 thousandths. Um, I want to bring that up maybe to 15, 16. Um, but I, I was able to not have to grind the majority of these. I'm in the end grinding about a quarter of the valves. Well, that's not right. I haven't counted. You can see from this. <laughs> what is that? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, just over a quarter. But now I'm about to do a um, total of eight. So, um, just so you know, every time you do this, uh, you have to, to check the gap. Um, it actually does change the, the gap, the valve lash is what I'm calling the gap. It's actually changed if you have the uh, heads bolted on, supposedly. I didn't try before, but I've heard. But I have noticed tiny variations in torque do change the valve lash uh, significantly as far as, you know, one thousandths of an inch for, I don't know the exact conversion because it's a factor of placement of where the torque is mismatched, but um, you get the idea you want to do it right and so um, you know these get uh, 15 foot-pounds these get seven um, so you gotta fully install the uh, the cams and what holds them down before you can check and of course you check by slipping um, these feeler gauges underneath um, to get the valve lash get all right, so let's take one out. And I'm not going. Well, let's see. Over here, um, I have 14 thousandths, 13, 13, and 13. So I'm going to start with, uh, I guess, from the left. Um, so I got this magnet right here. It's a great way to pull these out. Um, so you can see this one has not been grinded. This is 4.95. So, I am going to stick this phone in my hoodie and hope that it doesn't fall. Bear with me for the bad filming. I'm um, just going to try and wipe some oil off of this. I guess I'll take this out and show you my apparatus that I came up with. So, this is just a Dremel um, bit right there on a drill press. Um, I went with one that was, uh, you know, smaller than this, because if you look at the cup, um, you end up spinning the middle on the center, and you, you actually want the outer edge on the center, so go with the smaller, smaller radius. Got a drill press here, and, uh, yeah, gonna turn it on. Well, basically... I'm going to bring this down into there, and I'm going to, uh, if you get this back edge right here, 
it's rotating that way so this will push your piece into the vise um, so that's a good strategy to have less um, you know relying on you holding it here and I did end up deciding to keep this loose so that I can rotate and move along but it is sandwiched in this direction um, nicely for stability and I got a nice flat surface here um, so I took some time to ensure and I tested on a cup before this all right now I'm gonna stick this in my hoodie and hope this goes okay Let's see how that looks. So you can see the uh, the magnetism on all the metal shavings. Um, it's interesting. Um, sort of makes sense with all that uh, friction transferring energy. Um, so yeah, just play around with different grits of um, Dremel tool stones. There probably the stones are the best. Um, this turned out pretty good. I've been judging how much I took off basically by how many shavings there are. Um, and in the meantime I'm trying to maintain a level surface, of course. That's kind of why I'm using the drill press. Um, I'd be surprised if I took off two thousandths there. It's going to take me too long to put this back on during this video properly to actually check. I'm going to grind the other ones, but that looks like I took off about up to two thousandths which is fine because it was already at spec at 13 thousandths but like I said I could go up to 16 thousandths for the exhaust valves yeah so that that's looking pretty good now I'm gonna, I'm gonna clean that off real nice with the air hose and then with the new paper towel before I put that back in so valve latch adjustment um, it's important so that you maintain good compression. Um, one of the factors that's going to help you run another 100,000 miles. Um, good compression, not excessive slapping on these lifters by the cam lobes. Um, hydraulic valve lifters, they maintain uh, zero gap um, because they actually have a little um, spring and moving parts kind of like a compressible piston shock absorber these do not so the gap is very important i hope this helps